Yo, welcome, Fronies. Good news. I feel better again just right in the time for the upcoming Castle Siege on the 17th of November. And in this video, you will learn everything that you need to know about the Siege. We will go over rewards, ruins, castle entries, golems and siege ruins, points of interest like pillage and rest points. And in the end, I will share tips and strategies with you on how you can succeed. And we will also cover on how guilds that are not in big alliances still get a bunch of the Lucent as rewards. So let's go over the rewards first so you actually know why you should even participate, what's in the pot for you. From all the taxes that are being collected, 40% will go into the total pot that will be winnable. If you are in the auction house and you hover over the tax rate, you will always see that there is a castle tax rate. And this is this tax right here. And this tax is what is being put in at tax delivery, a special event that happens after the castle siege. So if you also want a guide video on this, don't forget to subscribe. And then from that 40%, 50% will go into a siege vault and 10% will go into pillages. Those pillages, we will go over later in a bit more detail, is also the way on how smaller guilds can participate and take away that pot. And to not discourage people that are not in like a giant alliance, let's say a giant alliance wins the siege vault. The 50% and they split it through four guilds. They're only having a really small advantage over if your guild managed to hold one pillage point, for example. Like the difference is really small. The only time where the, the difference gets significant is when the guild at the end can capture the, the siege vault and the other guilds did not train the pillagers. So if you're a smaller guild, go for those pillagers to make the big guild suffer. So let's go over the rules next. When Siege starts, you're having 15 minutes of preparation time and then the actual PvP begins. And the PvP will last 45 minutes. The regular respawn is the Titan Reach Runes Waypoint. When the castle is starting, everyone in the castle that is not the defending guild will actually be ported out. And the defending guild from now on is always the guild that won the Siege the last time. If you want to group somewhere with your guild, and not get ported out and having to run back, you want to group on the height of those siege runes right here. For the whole event, you will not know who is who. So the characters are anonymous, but all enemies will be red, all teammates will be blue, that includes your alliances, and yellow will be the guild that is currently holding the throne. All lead positions in guilds will also have special marks around their names. And this is especially important because only the guild leader of a guild can claim the throne. Once he does click on the throne, there's no cast time. You only have to click it once as a guild leader. The guild leader will turn into the usurper. And around the usurper, a yellow circle will form. And the more people of the guild will gather in that circle, the more damage reduction the usurper is getting. If you manage to defend that state of the usurper for three minutes, you have officially captured the throne. But this does not mean yet that you automatically already won the siege. You will have to defend the throne from another takeover until siege ends. And that also means we are having a potential overtime of three minutes if an, a guild lead managed to take a super last second. Now let's go over the different options that you have to enter the castle to also determine which are important spots to either defend or attack. And the first one right here are the levers at the outer gate. Here you can see there's two levers, and if they are used simultaneously, the gate will open and you can enter the castle. So it's a viable strategy to get on top of the walls and activate that if you are the attackers. And vice versa, you have to defend it from the inside. We will have two more lever systems right here at the Stone Guard Castle. One even being a side entrance from the outside of the castle. This is what the spot looks like in-game. You will see you have two levers here and you have two levers right there. So having a defensive team here is essential. And if you're an attacker, if you're able to control that point, you're having easy access close to the throne room. The next up, the blue marks are sewers. Those are especially important for assassin style players. Because if you enter those sewers right here, you will see there's rats inside. And with Shadow Strike, you can actually port through those gates and enter the castle in a sneaky way. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. 
currently 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. This sewer right here, you're even able to bypass the inner gate. Here you can see it in game. Again, you can port through the red with Shadow Strike really easy. And you're almost at the throne room. The four siege runes that you can see out here is what the attackers can fight for. Depending on what siege runes you are taking, you will gain access to different golems. To access one of those siege runes, one of the leadership positions in a guild need to capture it for five seconds. Damage is not interrupting that capture, but hard CC is. So I've made this little overview here so you know actually what you are getting from the different siege runes. On siege rune number four, you can get the jump attacker. I've also noted down when the first spawn is happening, because that one, for example, is available right away, but others like the stone pressure, they actually get their first spawn later. And that can determine in guild's tactic on positioning. As the jump attacker name already says, it can jump on walls and therefore also enter the castle. The stone crasher is what you get at rune number three. It spawns, as I just said, five minutes later, and it's a specialist at breaking the outer walls. At siege rune number two, you will be able to find the battle carrier right away. Similar as in the Lord of the Rings movies, it is able to bring troops on top of it to the wall. So you, for example, can activate those levers early to bypass the gate. 10 minutes later, at the same siege rune number two, you will also be able to get the gate hammer. That one is specifically designed to kill the inner gate of the castle. So to sum it up, what are your options? You can go with the battle carrier and activate the lever. You can with the stone crusher destroy the outer walls. With the jump attacker, you can go over the walls and into the castle. Or with the gate hammer, you can go into the castle and destroy the inner gate to have access to the throne room. And rune number one is just the rest point if you capture it. And this is also going to be our next topic, rest points and pillage points. Because inside the castle, you will have three more rest points that you can capture. Those are the green ones right here. And it's highly important to do so because the time that it will take your troops to return to the battle if they have to go all the way out of spawn point is absurd. I would even go that far if it's almost impossible to keep defending the throne if you're not managing to get one of the inner rest points. This is also why it's so interesting to be the defending guild because the defending guild has their rest points somewhere over here in this area. So now let's go over the pillage points. You can see right here, it's those flags with those chests. And if you occupy one of those, every five minutes, you will get 15% of the Lucent that is in that pot. And there is a total of five. And even as a small guild, it's possible to hold them. It's rest really interesting are pillage points that are close to rest points, because if you're able to hold both, it's really easy to defend. Now let's go over some tips and strategies. One common strategy is actually bypassing all of that hustle with the gates and all of that, and boarding the whale and jumping in as an attacker from the sky. If you don't know which, which routes to take, check out that video right here. If your guild was able to secure a rest point on the battlefield for faster navigation with B, you can always instantly teleport back to the rest point. Also good if you want to regather your troops as a guild leader quickly. We have already talked about the possibility to enter the sewers um, with Shadow Strike via the reds. That also means if you're a defender, you can send people out on red duty to kill those reds so that strategy is not viable. Another way to screw over guilds is actually using the rain skill that you, for example, get when you're rank one activity, because that will flood the sewers and everyone inside will actually die. When your guild is trying to defend you super, you should have at least 30 people stacking inside. Of course, you do not want to have everyone stacking inside because of hard CC like uh, sleeps and tornadoes. But if you're stacking at least 30 people, the damage reduction buff will be amplified. And in the end, I want to offer you a challenge. Because if the Usurper is leaving the throne room, the capture attempt is also failing. So that in theory means you can just hook an enemy's Usurper out of the room and they would no longer be capturing. So if anyone is able to send in a clip where there is at least three chain hooks chained together in a row to get an Usurper out of the middle of the throne room, 
outside to break the curse, I will have a nice gift for you. And as always, if you have any questions regarding the game or anything else, just drop a comment. I will try to answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys. Thank you.